House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says lawmakers are expecting an eagerly anticipated report on President Biden's social spending bill sometime today. Democrats and Republicans debated the bill on the House floor earlier as it inches closer to a vote. The Congressional Budget Office's report has been seen as a key piece to solidifying Democratic support for the social and climate change spending package. It is supposed to outline the total estimated cost of the bill. CBS News Congressional Correspondent Nicole Killian is following this and more from Capitol Hill. Hi, Nicole. What is the latest on the bill and how close are House Democrats to finishing the text, the full text of the legislation? Well, they've pretty much gotten through most of that. The main thing that lawmakers have been waiting on at this point is a final score from the Congressional Budget Office. The CBO has been putting out these partial scores on portions of the legislation for several days now. And so uh, we now expect to get that final score as soon as this afternoon, which would set the stage for uh, the process of moving ahead with a final vote on the Build Back Better package. At least that is the hope of House Democrats and House Democratic leaders there had been some talk that maybe we wouldn't get that score until Friday, uh, but it seems like the speaker would like to try to get that vote in tonight if she can. But obviously, whether it's uh, this afternoon or whether it is tomorrow, uh, you know, Democratic leaders feel pretty confident that at this point they've, you know, kind of got everybody on board with the package uh, that we won't see a repeat of what we saw with that infrastructure bill a little over a week ago and that this will uh, move on to the Senate. And Nicole, Republicans are arguing that the bill will increase taxes for average income Americans. Um, but is there any truth to that based on what we know about the bill? We have heard the president promise that no one who makes under the $400,000 a year will see their taxes go up. Well, some of that, you know, might be able to be gleaned from the score in terms of, you know, again, kind of the true analysis and, and cost of this bill. But uh, certainly there are a number of provisions in there. You know, in, in Republicans' view, uh, they believe that this package just adds to spending and, in their view, taxes. And so uh, that is why you hear them kind of mention that, because at the end of the day, uh, they feel that this bill, uh, for instance, could contribute to rising inflation, which really is at a 30-year high right now. So from that standpoint, that's why you hear Republicans arguing that at the end of the day, the average citizen could pay a little bit more because of this infusion of money that's being pumped into the economy by such a massive package. Now, uh, obviously, there are fact checkers out there who can do a deeper dive on this, but, you know, that is kind of the line of rhetoric from Republicans. Democrats, on the other hand, will uh, continue to articulate and argue that this bill is fully paid for. And again, that's what they hope that this congressional budget analysis shows. And even if there are some discrepancies with that, they still feel pretty confidently that this bill uh, more or less will be fully paid for to encompass all of these policy proposals ranging from child care to climate to health care uh, and housing. Uh, so, Nicole, I also want to ask you about the Capitol Police Union election today. An officer is trying to unseat the five-year incumbent chairman of the Capitol Police Labor Union Committee. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so this is Officer Harry Dunn, who gave some of that emotional testimony to the January 6th Select Committee back over the summer. Uh, he was one of the officers who described being subjected to racial slurs and epithets uh, during uh, that attack. And so uh, he is a 13-year veteran of the force. And, you know, he has been quite articulate uh, about uh, the needs that he feels uh, officers need at this point in time. Uh, in a letter uh, that he uh, submitted uh, announcing his intention to run uh, that was obtained by CBS News. You know, he indicated that it's really time for transformation. Uh, and, and so that is part of the reason why he is running. And as you mentioned, he is going up against uh, not only a five-year uh, incumbent chairman of the Capitol Police Union, but somebody who has served on the union uh, for a total of some 14 years. And so that incumbent uh, has indicated that, uh, you know, this has equally been a very difficult time uh, for the department, especially in the wake of January 6th and over the last, uh, you know, a couple of years. But, uh, you know, he has argued that uh, he has helped uh, bring in more money uh, to support the force, you know, for, for wellness, uh, for uh, overtime, uh, which have been a, a lot of the issues that have plagued the Capitol Police over uh, many, many years. So uh, it, it will be an interesting dynamic to see how this plays out. We know that this uh, 
uh, election will be by secret ballot, so we probably won't know the outcome of it for at least another day. But uh, again, you know, in speaking with Officer Dunn personally on a number of occasions, you know, he does feel very strongly and very passionately uh, about the force. Not only again in his testimony, but uh, you know it's certainly something where he would like to see the direction uh, not only of the department but also of rank and file officers. He wants to see more support for them. He wants to see some changes uh, than than what's been in the current system. Although he has indicated he certainly appreciates everything uh, that union officials have done up to this point. So we'll see how it plays out. Well, speaking of playing out the continuing ripple effects of the U.S. attack on of the uh, the attack on the U.S. Capitol, you have new reporting on the House Select Committee investigating January 6th. What can you tell us about that? Where do things stand with Trump administration officials who are not cooperating? So the committee continues to make a lot of progress. Uh, they say that they have spoken uh, to uh, nearly 200 officials at, at this point in time, according to a committee aide, and that they have obtained uh, upwards of 25,000 documents, gotten about 200 tips through a tip line that the select committee has, and uh, that they've been talking to a range of different officials, people both in and out of government, uh, scholars, experts, uh, people who have defended the Capitol. Uh, and, and so from that standpoint, they feel that that they are working as expeditiously as possible. That being said, we do know that there are still some officials who uh, aren't as cooperative with the committee, uh, most namely, you know, we saw this week with Steve Bannon, of course, and now uh, facing uh, an indictment and, and these charges of a contempt of Congress for not only failing to appear for a deposition, but also for failing to provide documents to the committee. So now uh, his court case is uh, officially underway, and the committee hopes that that does send a signal to other witnesses, uh, namely folks like former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, to cooperate. Now, they haven't yet uh, gone on forth in, in recommending contempt charges against Mark Meadows as well, uh, but committee members are still uh, hanging that out there. That, that is a possibility, but they are uh, appearing at this time to still uh, deliberate over uh, their next steps with how they handle uh, Mark Meadows, but again, uh, not completely ruling out at some point uh, later down the road, uh, possibly uh, charging him with contempt if need be if he doesn't comply. All right, Nicole Killian on Capitol Hill. Thank you so much. You bet.